All right, introduce yourself. My name is Douglas Palmer, former mayor of Trenton, New Jersey, and now currently businessman and president of Palmer Associates. All right, firstly, I want to first say this is an honor interviewing you, having you on my platform, um, someone of your stature. Um, thank you for even, you know, making time for this and, you know, continuing to connect the generations as we are doing. Um, well, you know, Mama Lewis, it's really my pleasure. You know, when I look at yourself and other people of your generation who are born, either born and raised in Trenton or come here uh, either to live or to do business, I'm, I'm always en engaged and, and enthused to be talking to a new generation of business people and leaders in the Trenton community. So you're actually doing me honor for allowing me to speak to you and your audience. All right. So this is a fun fact. I, I thought I would have known this, but I didn't know that you were the first black mayor of Trenton? Yeah, well, I don't know why you didn't know that, see, Mama Lou, but it's good. Uh, you know, uh, I was born and raised in Trenton all my life, and in, in West Trenton. And when I was 10 years old, I played in the West Trenton Little League, which still exists. And I saw this gentleman come on the baseball field, and he was shaking everybody's hand. And I was like, man, this guy seems like everybody likes him. Who is he? I said, that's the mayor of Trenton. I said, wow, you know, this is one day I'm going to be mayor of Trenton. And at that time, there was no black mayors in the United States, really none. And so my, my teammates, who were majority all white, the Western Little League and West Trenton was majority white at the time in the 50s, uh, they laughed. They said, that's, you know, there's not going to be a black mayor. But I always had that desire to be mayor and the first black mayor of Trenton. And through God's blessing and strong support from my family and friends and a lot of other people, uh, the road took me to be the first African-American mayor of the city of Trenton, which I hold in high esteem. The only honor higher than that is being a husband and father to my wife, Chris, and my daughter, Leigh. But other than that, this is the greatest, greatest accomplishment in my life. Uh, I mean, I've always heard your name, Doug Palmer, Doug Palmer. I've heard it, like, since childhood, even now, I've always heard your name. So um, I think that the legacy itself, you know, speaks for itself, you but know, you, from now. You know, Mama Lou, what's, what's interesting, though, is when you're the first anything, there's a lot of pressure on you. Mm. And being the first African-American mayor of Trenton, at a time when Trenton was maybe 52% African-American, we, we had a strong Italian, uh, Irish, Eastern European community, a growing Latino community. And, you know, to be an African-American, the first African-American mayor at a time when the city was so diverse uh, was incredible. And there was a lot of pressure on me from a lot of people. As a matter of fact, when I became mayor, the white folks in the city majority of them thought that the sun was never going to shine again. They said, oh, God, what's going to happen now? Now, this is 1990, and people were acting like this. And, so, and my black brothers and sisters, they thought the sun would never set, that things were going to be great. So when you have those two dynamics happening, both of them aren't real. Mm -hmm. So you have to really govern in a way that everybody feels that you represent them. Right. And it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's a balancing act. And I had to go into the white community in Chambersburg and the South Trent and let them know that I care about this city and it's important that every neighborhood is taken care of. But it's also important that we had areas in primarily in the north and western sections which were primarily African American and, and Latino that really had been suffering tremendous poverty and abandonment and that we had to take care of those things because we couldn't have a strong city unless everyone took part in the development of the city. And so I said, what I would say in the white community, I say in the black community and vice versa. And I think that's what enabled me to try to break down some of the barriers, especially by the white folks, uh, and even black folks about what kind of mayor I would be. And 
I was blessed to have a tremendous cabinet of people, professionals from all over the state. And uh, it, it helped me become mayor for 20 years. That kind of coalition of, you know, working with the community, all, all the community, being honest with them and hiring good people and having the courage to stand up for what is right, even against obstacles uh, that you have in front of us, whether it's dealing with the state, whether it's dealing with police, police unions, that, you know, at the time we were having problems with, whether it's dealing with gang issues. So, you know, it, it, it's a great job. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of challenges, but through a great uh, collaboration with people in this city and the state and the county, you know, we were, we were successful. All right. So let's, let's talk a little bit about, you know, the pre-20 year run and the 20 year run. Um, you built a lot of relationships, a lot of alliances, a lot of coalitions. You've been a part of a lot of them. You had a relationship with the New York mayor. You had a relationship with a Boston mayor. Um, not only that, um, joining fraternities and um, the Democratic community, Trenton. What's the, what's the word? I don't know if I wrote it right, but there's a you were a part of a lot of organizations and you probably have came across, you know, thousands of people. What's your way of vetting people, you know, and creating these good relationships, choosing the right people to be around, right? Well, you know, I, I go back to a lot of things that my mother used to tell me when I was growing up. And it sounded corny when I was young, but it made so much sense. It was birds of a feather flock together, which means that People of similar character and desires and ambitions will be together, you know. And so I always uh, was around positive people. I, I think that's very important. And building relationships is what really has helped me in my career now as a businessman and president of Palm Associates, which is a government uh, relations firm that works with Fortune 500 companies and others that have relationships with cities and mayors to form businesses and, and create business opportunities for those clients. And, and if I could say anything, especially to the young people there, how important relationships are, how important it is that you broaden your sphere of the world. And the world, I mean even the Trenton community. It's important if you are interested in doing business in Trenton. If you're interested in being involved in the community or involved in politics, involved in anything, that you d develop those kind of relationships, which means that you know attend uh, events. Uh, there's a lot of events that, that go on. I know just recently the county executive Dan Benson had a Mercer County Chamber of Commerce and spoke to the Chamber of Commerce about business opportunities and primarily most of his talk was about opportunities that he envisions and pushing for the city of Trent. Going to those kind of lunches, going to other events like the Young People's Network that uh, uh, Councilwoman uh, Josie Edwards had with some other folks. Uh, going and listening, meeting people. We have, I'm chairman of the Mercer County Black Business Alliance for Opportunity and Equity. We have events coming up. Come and listen to people that are involved in business and network. It's very important that you do that because then you learn and then people know about you. And so when I was coming up, being a mayor, I was involved in mayor organizations. And I ended up being blessed to be the president, as you just alluded to, of the United States Congress of Mayors, which is the biggest and most prestigious organization of mayors in the world. And here I'm guy from Trenton, New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, was the president of this uh, prestigious organization with over 1,100 mayors and 300 active mayors from cities such as Philadelphia, Baltimore, New York, St. Louis, all the major cities are part of this. And I learned to work with my fellow mayors to find out what they were doing in their cities, bringing those things back to Trenton. I, I worked with uh, state officials let them know what we needed in Trenton to bring those back. So relationships are critically important. And I, I would encourage anyone that is interested in business or 
for, for doing anything in their lives, to go out and create relationships. Talk to people. Talk to myself. There's all kinds of people. Janine Malou, Sam Frisbees. There's so many people. Marlene Reynolds Jackson. There, there's so many people that will give you advice and help you network. And, and that's the only way that we're going to be successful, is when we network and bring that power, collective power, to make our community better, which is what I'm endeavoring to do in my relationships now with a whole group of outstanding individuals. Wow. All right. Um, I want to take you back to 1973. You know, you're at Hampton College. Right, were you, what happened between you leaving Hampton in 1973 to you becoming mayor in 1990? There's a big gap there that I can't really find on Google. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good question. And actually, Mama Lou, that set the stage for me being uh, mayor of Trenton. So uh, growing up in Trenton, I was a pretty good baseball player. Uh, baseball was the king of sports back then, especially in the African American community. And I was I was pretty good. Uh, out of high school, I went to Bordentown Military Institute. I was a prospect of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Instead of following that, I went to Hampton Institute, which is now Hampton University, is an historically black college, and I was on a baseball scholarship. And uh, I, during my tenure there, I made all conference, two to three years I was there, my freshman year and my junior year. But along the way, uh, my junior year, now I love baseball, baseball was everything. Along the way, the school decided that after our junior year, they were gonna eliminate the baseball program because of lack of funds. And that devastated me. And we decided that if we do something that was never done before at Hampton, and that is to win the championship of the CIAA, they can't get rid of the team. And lo and behold, we had an outstanding group of players. And we won the CIAA, the only team in Hampton's history to ever win it. And they still got rid of the team. And you're talking about a person that was angry. I was very angry at the school. I, I my senior year, when we tried to get it back, and we finally realized that we weren't getting it back. I played football the year before. I didn't play football. I became self-destruct. I was not the person that I would ever want to be around. I, I was mad at everybody. I was mad at baseball gods. I was mad at school. I was, I guess, mad at myself. And I quit baseball. I actually stopped playing baseball. I boycotted it. When I came home in 73, I got a job working at C.D. Hill Refrigeration, which no longer exists, so it's on Pennington Avenue. And I didn't do anything. I just bought a car, you know, enjoyed the life of a 21-year-old. My mother said to me, as much as the community has given to you when you were growing up, you should give something back. And so I got involved in the West End Little League as a coach, the league that I was in when I was 10. And I ended up coaching for 18 years years. And in that time, I became the president of the league. I also got very involved in the Trenton NAACP. I was a treasurer. We had a political action group called Success Incorporated. And at the time, we had school board elections. And we used to fight Chambersburg, who most of the uh, elected members were Italian. And we used to fight back and forth about education. And uh, I got very involved and active in the community. And so that's what I was doing and made a name for myself as a community activist. And in 1981, there was a seat open. John Watson was going for an assembly. There was a seat open. And the community of Trent, based on my working community, said, we want Doug Fine on the Democratic ticket. And the Democratic Party, they said, no, nah, I don't know. He's too young. He's, I was 28. He's a little crazy. But they said, no, this is who we want. We support your candidates. This is our candidate. And we forced the Democratic Party's hand. I became a uh, candidate for Mercer County Freeholder in 1981. I was supposed to lose, but the community rallied behind me, and the Democratic Party did. And I won a one-year term, 
Next year I want a three year term, the year after that I want another three year term, the year after that I want another three year term. And then I set the stage for me to become, uh, to run for mayor. So I was very active in the community, not to mention my dad bought a bar called the First Choice Lounge. Now some of your listeners may be too young to know about that, it was on Warren Street. Uh, but we owned a bar, it was very popular, and I was involved in a lot of activities. And so. Through that time, I worked very hard in the community. I worked at the Board of Education. I became the head of purchasing for the school district. I have a degree in business. And uh, it really set the stage for me being ready to run for Mayor Trenton. And I have to tell you, I was sort of scared to run. There have been many great men men that ran, African-American men that ran for mayor. Reverend S. I. Woodson, my mentor, was one of them. He got beat by Arthur Holland. We had others that would run, they would get beat. And, you know, I always felt, oh, I'm only 38, I can wait. But the community was like, we can't wait, you know, it's your time. I was afraid I was going to get beaten. And, you know, nobody wants to lose, so. But, you know, I realized that I believe I could do a good job. And if I didn't try, even if I failed, if I did my best and failed, I'd feel all right. But if I didn't try, I'd always, always, it would always bother me. So I got a lot of good people, white, black, Latino people behind me. And uh, lo and behold, I, out of 27,000 votes cast, that's when people used to really vote in Trenton, 27,000 votes. Now about 6,000 people voted. And out of 27,000 votes, I only won by 297 votes the first time. And it was like when President Obama won in Trenton. People were dancing in the streets. And uh, it, was, it was a great experience. It, 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 was, it was unbelievable. I owe so much to the community uh, that helped me become mayor, but also stay mayor for 20 years. Oh, man. What's, what's some things you remember during that 20-year time period that really stand out to you? Well, one of the things that stands out to me, we had, we had a terrible relationship with the police officers uh, and the community. When I ran for mayor, we actually had white police officers in uniform in black polling places on election day checking people in. Intimidation, trying to intimidate blacks from uh, voting. And we went to court that day and got them out of there. But then they came back in plain clothes. But we were able to win. We had terrible police community relations. Uh, we had a lot of crime. We had a lot of stolen cars. And I realized after some horrific events that happened in 98 that we had to make a change. And what I did with the support of the community, uh, because in 1998, I won by 87% of the vote. And uh, we had a horrific killing of a young lady, 15-year-old young lady named Jenny Hightower, who uh, was killed in a stolen car, and the police officer shot into the car and killed Kurt as a passenger. And it was a terrible, terrible, horrible situation. And the community naturally was very upset. I worked very hard with the state attorney general's office to change the rules where if you steal a car, you're not supposed to shoot in a car. You're not supposed to chase a stolen car around. They changed those guidelines. And uh, that Friday, Good Friday, was their service at Union Baptist Church. And that early that morning, police raided a home in that neighborhood and the cop fell into the, into the house and shot a baby and the mom that were sleeping on the couch. And so this is the same day as this young girl's, young girl's funeral. And it was even worse. And people were yelling and screaming at me because I'm the mayor, you know. And the election was a month away, and I got 87%. So what were they saying? They weren't saying we love you. They're saying, we want to give you the power to make changes with this police force. And that's what I did. In 99, through legislation, we were able to, through a referendum, 
changed from a civil service police system to a civilian director, which we still have, where I could hire and fire the chief if they weren't doing a good job, which you couldn't do before. And we won by 200 and some votes, a very hotly contested race. But we won, and that was one of the biggest accomplishments uh, that I had. And, and to really talk about how much that impacted my life, I played Santa Claus at Kellwater Elementary School, and I saw a clipping that said Santa, freeholder Doug Palmer, is announcing he's going to run for mayor early next year, which I did. And in the picture was the principal of the school, Gloria Tunstall. And the little girl on my lap was, the, was Jenny Hightower, the girl that got shot in that car. So I always felt that God had a reason for me to be mayor and to always look, look out for the young, young people, like the Jenny Hightower and Tajani Glee and, and, and others, and the poor young lady who got shot in 2009 coming home from a barbecue on NLK. I always felt a burning desire to make this city safe for them. So that was one of the key issues and things that I had that I worked on, along with the Weed and Seed program where we had schools open for youngsters, after school program, the school program where youngsters could travel safely all over the city to do different events, uh, and all the home ownership housing that we created, homeowners. And those houses still exist today all throughout uh, Trenton. So I'm proud of that. There's more work to be done. Uh, there's more work that needs to be done. But, you know, I did the best I could with, with uh, great people working with me. It's a lot to soak in. I feel like you just wind the clock back. And um, I, know, I know people could never understand the amount of pressure that probably was on you. Um, but how did you learn to deal with through the amount of opinions that you had to deal with throughout the time and even now? Well, now I know you're more at peace, but dealing with that amount of pressure, what, what would you say to other young people in the political fields, whether they're city council or they're in the Democratic parties? Well, it was easier when I was coming up because we didn't have social media. Social media is something that is a game changer. Fortunately for me, I didn't have to deal with all that. And it would have, uh, you have to have a strong, positive self-image. and tune out the noise. In ways I had to do that myself. And I always believed that, you know, I wasn't, if I'm mayor, I'm not trying to get reelected just to make, to be popular. You know, I wanted to make change. And a lot of times to make change, it's not popular. When I talked about changing the police force, it wasn't popular. When I talked about Trent needed a hotel, and we went out and got the Marriott, a major hotel here. It wasn't popular. A lot of the things that I had done weren't popular at the time, but then people saw the benefit of that. So uh, I, I, would, I would just say I wanted to do the best I could. I want to listen to what people are saying, be mindful of that, and have good advice around me. But at the end of the day, it's like you, anyone in your life. The bottom line, it's you. It's going to fall on you. You can't blame anybody. It's going to be on you. And I would rather be able to make decisions that I believed in. And if I lost an election, fine, as long as I believed in it. But what I didn't want to have happen was to make decisions that I didn't believe in and lose an election. So I always believe in just do the best you can and let the people know what's happening. But today, with social media, it's, uh, it, it's a lie. And, and I was just uh, urge these elected officials and others, because uh, there's so many likes, don't likes, so much mental anguish and harm is done. People listening to things is to begin to heal yourself and know who you are. Love yourself. You're very important. You know, God created everybody with a, a positive attribute that they have. Sometimes you may not know it right away, but it's in you. 
and just try to hold off the noise and, and be a positive person. And it's, it is difficult. I, I don't think, quite frankly, I could be a good elected official today because oh, I probably would smack somebody. You know, I, 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 I probably throw somebody's head. You know, I, you know, I, you know, I can't stand anybody talking about me in their basement doing all this. What you say in your comments? Face to face, face, you know, face to face. You know, I'm, I'm old school. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not advocating violence. You know? I'm just saying. All right, man. Well, thank you for this interview, man. Rewinding the clock. Um, this is historic. Um, I learned a lot from this. You know, just got a, a view of the 90s and some of the things that's going on, that was going on, and some of the ways you handled it, you know. Also, your, your advice on networking, uh, birds of a feather flock together, so many lessons. So, Do I have time for one other thing? Give them one more. Let me just say to the folks out there, I have never been more excited about the future of Trenton since I became mayor in 1990. I was very optimistic about what was happening in Trenton. I'm as optimistic now as I was then because of young people like you and others in this community that are take, that have the courage to open up businesses, whether it's restaurants downtown, whether it's marketing firms. Keep being positive about Trenton. We're going to work with the county and the city and the state African American Chamber of Commerce to make opportunities for you. Keep being positive, and the, and the help is out here. So keep doing what you're doing. You're helping this city in a great way, and just anything that I can do, just feel free to call me. And I love the opportunity that you've given me to do this, my Lord. And you keep up the good work, too, my brother. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you.